Introduction A Thing of Beauty is a poem written by John Keats. John Keats was born in London in 1795. His parents died when he was only 15. He became an apprentice to a surgeon, but he was interested in poetry. A Thing of Beauty is an excerpt from his longer poem Endymion. According to the poet, a thing of beauty is a source of joy forever. The sun, the moon, trees, musk roses, and daffodils are all objects of beauty. In addition to these objects of nature, man also produces objects of beauty. Art, poetry, stories, mythology, etc. are all sources of eternal joy for us. Summary Beautiful things are eternal sources of joy. Their beauty can never vanish, nor can it ever diminish. It makes a permanent place in our mind and is a source of health and peace. The world has sufferings and noble people are few, but on account of things of beauty, we weave flowery bands to tie ourselves with this earth. Things of beauty remove the curtain of darkness and gloom from our spirits. The moon, the sun, the clear streams, and the thickets in the green forests sprinkled with musk roses are all objects of beauty. The grand mythological stories, epics and ballads about the deeds and doom of our heroes are all sources of eternal joy. 1. A thing of eye beauty is a joy forever its loveliness increases, it will never pass into nothingness, but will keep a bower quiet for us, and a sleep full of sweet dreams, and health, and quiet breathing. The poet, John Keats, was a nature lover who loved beauty in any form. He expresses his love for beautiful objects by saying that they are a source of eternal joy and pleasure. Their beauty keeps on increasing with the passage of time, and it doesn't fade away. The joy that a beautiful thing provides is eternal. The imprint it leaves on our mind is indelible. Thus, its loveliness can never fade away or die out. Beauty, according to the poet, is not ephemeral but eternal. The poet feels that a thing of beauty is like a quiet bower or sleep, full of sweet dreams with healthy and quiet breathing. A beautiful thing not only provides peace and serenity, but refreshes and relaxes us by driving away aggression and restlessness. It keeps people away from worldly concerns. 2. Therefore, on every morrow, are we reading a flowery band to bind us to the earth, in spite of despondence, of the inhuman dearth of noble natures, of the gloomy days, of all the unhealthy and or darkened ways made for our searching? Yes, in spite of all, some shape of beauty moves away the pole from our dark spirits. Keats, as a worshipper of beauty, felt that life on earth would not be worth living without its treat of beauty. In spite of misery and gloom, one is inspired to live owing to the moments of beauty, which he finds on earth. The delicate and beautiful moments when we enjoy beauty of nature and its memories cause one to stay connected to the earth. Human beings face many disappointments in their life due to the scarcity of noble human beings or by following the unhealthy path of negative thoughts. Still there comes a ray of hope when we look at the same beautiful object, as it takes away the covering of negativity from one's mind and fills it with optimism. This helps us shed sadness from our mind's alliteration of noble natures. 3. Such the sun, the moon, trees old and young, sprouting a shady boon. For simple sheep, and such are daffodils with the green world they live in, and clear rills. That for themselves a cooling covert make gains the hot season, the mid-forest break. Rich with a sprinkling of fair musk, rose blooms. The bountiful nature is full of beautiful objects like the sun, the moon, trees, whether old or young, which provide shade to everyone, the daffodils that bloom in the forests, the clear streams that provide cooling effect in the area where they are found against the hot season and make everyone feel comfortable. The mid-forest ferns and musk roses also have the same effect on us and give us mental peace and calmness alliteration. I, such the sun, the moon, too, themselves a cooling covert make. 4. And such too is the grandeur of the dooms we have imagined for the mighty dead, all lovely tales that we have heard or read, an endless fountain of immortal drink, pouring unto us from the heaven's brink. John Keats now describes the literary beauty, the beauty which is found in the tales of the mighty and powerful people who are no more in this world now. The stories of their bravery, which we have heard or read, inspire us to be brave and courageous like those people. All the beautiful things have been compared to the immortal drink which is being poured to us straight from the heaven. Hyperbole an endless fountain of immortal drink metaphor fountain of immortal drink. The beautiful objects have been compared to the drink. We relish the drink so as natural objects.